Jeremiah 2, 11. As a nation ever changed its gods, yet they are not gods at all. But my people have exchanged their glory for worthless idols. Be appalled at this, O heavens, and shudder with great horror, declares the Lord. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. The word of the Lord. We are told of a man who meets this girl. Beautiful, charming, and is attracted to her. And as they start moving out, he discovers this girl had dropped out in senior two. So love draws him to ask the girl, can I take you back to school? At which the girl was very, very happy. Actually, not a girl, she was a woman now. So she enrolls for adult education. Two years down the road, she attains her level qualifications. The man is still willing because of love. He pays for her higher education, advanced level. Two years down the road, still adult education. She passes well. She enrolls to Makere University. And as she enrolls, the man says, he asks her out for marriage, to which proposal she, she accepts. But he says, because I want the best for you, I will not marry you now. Finish this course. It was a four-year course. He pays the four years, private, Makere University. The girl graduates with a first-class degree. The man finds her a job. She starts working. At that point, he says, I think now we get back to our first discussion of marriage. Two weeks down the road, the girl introduces another man to the parents and tells the parents, this is the man that is going to marry me. The parents had known the whole story of who had paid the fees all along and what the future held between their daughter and the other man. The girl insists. He did what he did, but this is the man I am going with. And the man was very, very disappointed. He had waited patiently. He had invested. He had wished the best for this girl. But at that time, she said, no. I have found my love elsewhere. Friends, this is quite similar to the story of Israel. When you read Jeremiah chapter 2, he says, I remember the devotion of your youth. How as a bride you loved me and followed me through the desert, through a land not sown. Israel was holy to the Lord, the first fruits of his harvest. All who devoured her were held guilty and disaster overtook them, declares the Lord. Israel had enjoyed love with God. God had done the best for Israel. God had chosen her as the firstborn. He had chosen this nation as the firstborn. He had lavished his entire love on this nation of Israel. By the time when Israel is meant to show devotion to this God, they forsake this God for Baal. They forsake this God for worthless idols. They're like that girl. At the time of the marriage, the girl chooses someone else. At the time when God has formed them as a nation to see his purposes now come to pass, they choose another path. So he says, 
as a nation ever changed its gods. Yet there are no gods at all. But my people have exchanged their glory for worthless idols. So he says they have committed two sins. One, they have forsaken me, the spring of living water. How did they forsake him, the spring of living water? They followed worthless idols. As if that was not enough, they exchanged their glory for worthless idols. They reduced themselves. They were a people who had the name of Yahweh upon them. They were a nation that had been called out of Egypt. When God was calling them out of Egypt, he told Pharaoh clearly, release my firstborn. I, am, I called my firstborn Israel out of Egypt. But now they are going low. They are exchanging their glory. They are leaving their position at God's, the up of God's eye and giving in to worthless idols. They have forsaken the Lord. Not only them, the priests had walked in rebellion. Verse 8. The priests did not ask, where is the Lord? The priests were in total rebellion. Those that were meant to show the way of worship, those that were meant to lead the people in worship, were instead turning them away from the Lord. They had forsaken the Lord. The leaders themselves had also walked in rebellion. Those who deal with the Lord did not know me. The leaders rebelled against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal following worthless idols. The leaders, the priests had set their own way. They had given into idolatry. And it says the second sin they committed, they have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. They had devised their own ways of worship. They had devised their own ways, the ways they thought were more comfortable. They felt God's ways are too hard so we can form our own ways. We can worship God our own way. So he's saying that is Literally digging your own cisterns. Those tanks that hold water underground. But it says they can't even hold that water. Why? Because they had chosen the way of Baal instead of God. The spring of living water, the oath of life, the one who sustains life, they had forsaken him. They felt their life would be their own way. So can I suggest a few things, friends? One, forsaking the Lord is forsaking life. Forsaking the Lord is actually walking in death. Any other way we follow contrary to the Lord's way cannot hold life. It is digging broken cisterns. Cisterns that cannot hold water. Cisterns that cannot bring life. Down to us today. I feel the same complaint to us today. My people have committed two sins. We have committed two sins. We've forsaken the Lord, the spring of living water. We've dug our own cisterns. How? We've deserted God's unchanging truth for changing cultural trends. We've sought the comfortable way to approach God. Contrary to his own prescribed unchanging way. We want God to fit in our trends, but we don't want our trends to fit in God's trends. The young people usually say, Kapiachi Muchivuga, which is the new thing. What is on vogue? So we want the new thing instead of the unchanging thing. We want what is captivating instead of truth. We want anything else apart from God's word. 
We want every junk apart from God's word. And he says, I have a case against you. You have forsaken me the spring of living water. Instead of drinking from the Lord, we are drinking from different wells. We've dug our own wells and he says, those cannot give life. No wonder we are dying, we are dying, we are dying because we are not partaking of the life-giving water. We've taken his word as secondary. Yet his word is real food for every hungry soul. It is real drink for every thirsty spirit. His word is what rejuvenates every weary soul. But we've sought rejuvenation elsewhere apart from his word. We've sought feeding from every philosophy void of his word. And he says, you have forsaken me. You have dug your own cisterns. Broken cisterns that cannot hold water. We have left his word. We've dug our own cisterns. No wonder we do not have life in us. Even as we walk, we walk like moving corpses because we are not drinking from the spring of living water. So what is the call for us this afternoon, friends, as we come to pray? In the same book of Jeremiah, the next chapter, this is what the Lord speaks. He spoke to them and he speaks to us. Verse 12. Go proclaim this message towards the north. Return, faithless Israel, declares the Lord. I will frown on you no longer. For I am merciful, declares the Lord. I will not be angry forever. Listen to verse 13. Only acknowledge your guilt. You have rebelled against the Lord your God. You have scattered your favors to foreign gods under every spreading tree and you have not obeyed me, declares the Lord. Verse 22. Return, faithless people. I will cure your backsliding. Yes, we will come to you for you are the Lord our God. Surely, their daughter's commotion on the hills and the mountains is a deception. Surely, in the Lord, our God is the salvation of Israel. Amen. So, the call is for us to return to the Lord. The call is for us to remember him as the spring of living water and feed from him alone. The call is for us to desert whichever idols we've given into. It would be your marriage as an idol. It would be money as an idol. It would be your job as an idol. It would be anything that is taking that place of God. The call is return. 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 That is the call before us this evening. And the promise is, I will cure your back sliding. Hallelujah. And lastly, the call is in John 7. John 7. John 7, 37. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. That is the call. The call is to come to Jesus. The call is to draw from only him. The call is to desert every worthless idol. The call is to desert everything we have, we, we, we have taken on that is contrary to God. The call is to have a total commitment to his word and draw and drink from his word. The call is to sit at his feet. The call is to be in his presence. The call is to seek him holy. The call is to surrender to Jesus. The call is to drink from Jesus. Amen. Let us raise up and pray. What is it that God is speaking to you? You could be guilty. I could be guilty. That we've forsaken him the spring of living water. That we've dug our own cisterns. 
but he calls us return. So I want to ask you to pray for yourself. I want to ask you to pray for yourself. You know it. You know it. I want to ask you in the next two minutes, pray for yourself. Then I'll be giving us another prayer direction. Lord, we choose to return to you in obedience. Forgive us where we've walked with trends and not allowed your word to inform us. Forgive us, Lord, where your word has not taken the central place, but we've dug our own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot even hold any water. Forgive us where we've exchanged your glory for worthless idols. Forgive us, my Lord and my King, where we've exchanged you for other things. You asked a question, has a nation ever changed its gods? Lord, forgive us where we've run away from you, where we've known you but have slipped off. Lord, forgive us. We are guilty of every manner of idolatry. Lord, we ask that you forgive us. Some of us, it's our jobs that have been our idols. Lord, forgive us. Some of us have literally gone into every manner of witchcraft. Lord, forgive us and deliver us. Some of us have given into these new forms of spiritualities, the new age religions. Lord, forgive us. Lord, we are guilty of forsaking you in many ways. Even as priests, Lord, forgive us. We have not inquired of you. We have not walked with you. As leaders, Lord, forgive us. We have walked in rebellion on many angles. Lord, you cause us to return. We choose to return. We choose to return. We choose to return. Lord, some of us have walked in compromise. We've worshipped these bodies. We've not exercised self-control. We've given into every manner of sexual immorality. We've given into every manner of greed. Lord, forgive us. You have promised that you will chew our backsliding. Lord, if that is your promise, so we believe it. Chew us, Lord. Heal us, Lord. We want to return to you the spring of living waters. We want to draw from you, Lord. We want to drink from you the real source of life. The Lord, we shall find our lives that are infused in yours because your real life and once we have you, we have life. So we choose to accept Jesus. We choose to take on Jesus. In accordance to your promise in John 7. That whoever believes in you springs of living water will flow. So now Lord we ask. Let your spring of living water flow through us. Let your very presence infuse us. Let your very presence fill us. Friend, let that be your prayer. That you and me will be full of Jesus. That you and me will, will be taken on a, on a journey of loving God like never before. Let that be your prayer. Lord, cause me to love you like never before. Cause me to have a fresh love for you. Cause us gathered here and those that are online, Lord, to have our lives totally immersed in you. This is our prayer. We want to totally be found in you. We want to be at the source of living water. I want to draw from you. So Lord, will you cause us to love your word that daily we shall draw and drink from your word. 
that daily we shall thirst for the pure spiritual milk which is able to make us grow. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we thank you because you are in our midst. So we ask that you will refill each vessel. Let there be, Lord, a real pursuit for you in our hearts, in our lives. Take us on that journey of pursuing you. May we be satisfied in you. May our thirst be quenched by you and your word. Forgive us where we've sought quenching in other things that are broken cisterns. Now, Lord, cause us to drink from your word daily. Give us a clear awareness day by day to drink from your word at every circumstance. Revive our prayer lives even in this period of Lent. The Lord, we shall be found in that place of real fellowship and communion with you. You ask a question that who is he that will devote to be close to me? Lord, cause us to be devoted to you. Cause us to be devoted to be closer to you. May we enjoy your praises. Lord, if we found your presence boring, revive us. Revive us. Where the things of God have not made sense, Lord, we ask. Grip our hearts, Lord, with a fresh love for you. With a fresh hunger for you. Give us a true pursuit for holiness. Give us a true pursuit for righteousness. Give us a true pursuit of you, our God. So now we yield our hearts to you. We yield our minds to you. We yield everything to you. And Lord, as we pray, now friends, just in two minutes, just lift your family. Lift your family. Lift the members of your extended family. There are many who have deserted the Lord. Bring them before God. Those that have chosen other ways that God in his mercy, he will look out for them. That that good shepherd who leaves the 99 and looks out for this one, that he will be pleased to search them out. Lord, we bring to you members of our families that have strayed from you, that have forsaken you, the spring of living water. We bring to you those that have given in to worshipping other things other than you. We bring before you those that are living in rebellion against you. Lord, in your mercy, redeem them. Lord, you're such a merciful God. You tell us in your word that you left the 99 sheep and looked for this one. Lord, we ask this, that you search them out. Your God who does not delight in the death of a sinner. Your God who came to seek and save the lost. So we pray in the name of Jesus. Remember mercy upon those members of our families that have strayed. Some are our siblings. Some are members of our extended families. Lord, in your mercy, redeem them. We ask that your message of a return to you will echo in their ears miraculously in whichever way you will choose. That you will redeem them at the end of the day. Lord, we even remember members of this church 
that pray at different times in the different congregations that have deserted you, that have forsaken you, the spring of living water. God in your mercy, redeem them. Redeem them. Those that have exchanged your glory for worthless idols, Lord, redeem them. We thank you because you're pleased to answer us. We thank you because you promised, call unto me and I will answer you. So now, Lord, we give you thanks because you've heard us. We give you thanks because you're restoring us. We give you thanks because you're giving us this real water to drink from you. We give you thanks because as we return to you, you're receiving us as you received that prodigal son. We give you thanks because you're accomplishing salvation in the hearts of many. So now receive all glory. Receive all honor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, amen.